I've been really interested in Todd McFarlane lately. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Why is that? I love Todd McFarlane not because I'm a huge fan of Spawn necessarily or anything like that. I'm just a huge fan of what he's been able to do as an entrepreneur. I mean, he is a badass businessman. I mean, not only is he an artist, but he's definitely an amazing businessman. And like his personal story, I feel like is a superhero story in itself, you know what I'm saying? Like that's like, he's more fascinating, he himself is more fascinating to me than like his character Spawn is, like 100%. Well, what brought him back into your being awareness? Well, okay, so what brought Todd McFarlane back into my awareness, back into the spotlight, is he had an announcement at Comic-Con. Blumhouse is making Spawn, Blum that is Blum. genius. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I keep saying I want it to be a dark R movie. That he is going to direct a new Spawn movie. He's working with Blumhouse, who's oh, gonna be wow. producing. Yeah. And uh, I Robot just- Robot would be really excited if he were here. Oh yeah, I know. He's off playing Bobo or something. Yeah, Spawn, the idea of a new Spawn movie in like 2018 or 2019 or whenever it's coming out is, is really interesting to me for a lot of reasons. It's a fascinating project. Why is that? Well, if you saw the original Spawn movie that came out, you know that it's like, <laughs> Not the one. It is not the one. I just recently rewatched it. It is so bad. It's so bad. And I want to see McFarlane redeem himself. Like, I want to see him redeem himself. But the reason that the first Spawn movie is so bad is because it's one of, like, the first modern, like, superhero movies. Like, he was just too ahead of his time was the problem. Like, the technology wasn't there yet. He didn't have the budget for what he needed to do. And it just didn't turn out, you know? I heard it was the most CGI of any movie at its time in 1997. Yes, at its time. And I remember hearing him, like, bragging about that. Like, I remember, like, all that stuff. And they spent all their money on Violator. They spent all their money on Violator. Um, Malbolgia did not look so good. <laughs> and they ran out of money. Yeah, they ran out of money and they had, and it was also a lot of first time people. It was a first time director. Uh, he was a first, uh, McFarlane was a first time producer. You had a first time animator. Like it was, you know, they didn't quite know what they were doing. I'm gonna also be directing it. You're right? directing so I'm it directing as well. the movie, writing, directing the movie, gonna be producing it with Jason. I, and, and also this time around, he's directing it too, which is like, oh shit, like I wanna see. So this is his movie, so if it sucks, it's on him, you know? Like, he, But the thing is about, the thing I love about Todd McFarlane is he loves being the underdog. He wants to be the under, he wants you to underestimate him because then he's gonna come up just to piss you off and just make the best thing ever, you know? And I, I believe in Todd McFarlane. Hate motivates that guy so much. And like, I, I don't know, that's why I identify with him. They wanted me to stop everything. Why? Because it was their status quo. He was everywhere. He was their stamp. And then here comes this little Canadian kid and he starts messing with it. Stop it. Stop making his eyes so big on Spider-Man. Stop making his costume so dark. Stop putting him out jumping out of panels. Then he goes, stop that spaghetti webbing, right? And it was it was a glowing moment because I had I didn't have a name at that point. I went, wow, cool. He just in his anger gave me the name. There's this amazing complex interview. Uh, absolutely check it out where he talks about his career. He gives some advice uh, if you're a creative person, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an artist. There's a lot of wisdom in there. I highly recommend it. He gave you some advice too. Oh yeah, he actually, I did get some advice from Todd McFarlane in person in New York after New York Comic Con, ran into him at a hotel and- What did uh, he say? Well, he said a lot of things. Like I couldn't believe how long he talked to us for. He like talked for a while. But the thing that I remember the most, you know, the thing that sticks out in my mind is where he, he, he poked me in my belly and he was like, always listen to your gut. You know, and I was like, oh, okay, I will. Like, he poked you in the belly? He did, he poked me in the belly and he was like, listen to your gut. And I was like, sure. And he also told me about contracts. He was telling me about contracts and about how you have to have your two deal breakers. You ask them their two deal breakers. And if your deal breakers cross, you have to be willing to walk away. Cause if you're not willing to walk away, you're not negotiating, you know, like you're not. Oh wow, you got, personal business advice from Todd McFarlane. Yeah, and honestly, it's been really helpful. Like, I've really taken it to heart and I've used it. So, I mean, he was right. Every day that I don't have to work for a corporation is a moral victory for me. And I've been doing it now for 30 years. And now, I'll quit. I'll retire before I go back. So I'll never I'll never go back. And I'll, I'll, I'll quit a free man. Dude knows what he's talking about. I mean, not only has this guy, I mean, okay, Todd McFarlane, if there's no Todd McFarlane, there'd be no saga right now, okay? Oh. Yeah, because Image Comics, Image Comics 
was in part started by Todd McFarlane. He was really disgruntled. He was a disgruntled Marvel employee. They weren't hooking him up like they should have been. They weren't treating him as well as they should have been treating him, you know, because he was making them a lot of money. And so he and a bunch of his friends who were also disgruntled got together and formed Image Comic Books in the 90s. And Image Comic Books has gone on and it continues. And so it's gone past their own brands into just being this creator-owned, independent comic book publisher. Honestly, I think that Image Comics is leaving Marvel and DC in the dust. You know, I think that they're the relevant comic book publisher right now. Like, I think that Image is the one to watch. I learned early on, Image at some point was kind of like Todd punishing Marvel. We go into the office of, of the publisher at Marvel. And he's a slick uh, Southern boy. Well, let me tell you, folks. What do you need? What do you need? What, what, why, why, why are you leaving Marvel? And Todd basically did all the time. But we don't get a plan. <laughs> he went into the watch. And we just basically say, we're leaving. Here's our reasons. We're not here to negotiate. Yeah, treat yourself to the Image Revolution documentary. It's really fantastic. Uh, it talks about the whole thing, has all these interviews with all the guys. They're all doing impressions of one another. It's really funny. I love people doing impressions of Todd McFarlane because he's just like, he's such a character. Like, Todd is such a character. And uh, it's really adorable, but also fascinating. And you also picked up the art of Todd McFarlane. Oh, well, I mean, this isn't mine. This is Director T-Bones, but yeah. <laughs> this is What's that about? Uh, this is a big art book. If you like Todd McFarlane's art, it, it's got all his art in it. So Marvel stuff, whatever, Spawn stuff, all the stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if you're into that, you can always check out art books. His whole career. Yeah, if you guys don't know, I think maybe a lot of you out there don't know, there's things called art books, which are really fucking cool. If you have an artist that you like, look them up, see if they have an art book, and then you can get a whole book of like all their artwork, and you can put it on your coffee table. People can look at it while they're hanging out. You can look at it. I'm an, I don't know, I'm an artist. I just, I love looking at people's art. I love art books. I love books in general, I'm a book slut, so. We would take both of these versions to the toy fair and say, our prototype will look like our finished product because other companies would say that, but they wouldn't deliver. When I first started, I went, sure, sure, young man. Mm -hmm. And I have to actually start it showing. That's so hard. I want a Todd McFarlane keychain. Uh, he should make like stuff of himself, like little like action figure. I would buy a Todd McFarlane action figure, actually. I wonder if he's done that. I mean, he has a whole action figure company. I mean, I would, but I'm an asshole. I don't know. I mean, he, yeah. A McFarlane toy of Todd McFarlane yeah, himself? I wanna, yeah, I want a McFarlane toy of Todd McFarlane. Yeah, and if he hasn't done that, like, oh, like, he's missing out. He's missing out. I know it seems like an asshole move, but dude, I would totally buy it, like, so fast. I would buy a Liefeld too, man. If he made a Liefeld, ah, oh, so good. And a Jim Lee, and yeah. an Eric Larson. Yeah, 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 they need a whole, yeah, he needs a whole image crew. Yeah, take this idea, Tom McFarlane, you're welcome to it, uh, just send me some freebies. Yeah, you could have um, Larson, Silvestri, I mean, but I definitely need that Liefeld, and I definitely need that Tom McFarlane, and their relationship, oh my God, is so funny. You'll find out Image Revolution. I want Jim Lee and an art desk. Ah, oh, Jim Lee, oh yeah, Jim Lee. And you have an art desk, oh, the art desk, the stuff, oh, that'd be so funny. Fuck, that would be so funny. If they came with their own little comic pages, like, oh, they're so cute. Oh, that would just, that would be the best. Oh, I noticed they reprinted some Todd McFarlane work too. Yeah, they reprinted Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man. Spider-Man was kind of a, a flagging title when he came onto it and then he revitalized it with his awesome style and all his like crazy spaghetti webs. He was the one where spaghetti webs came from. And uh, yeah, he really like remade this title in the 90s, totally. Any big comic book plans coming up for the show? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's some big comic book plans we got on the horizon. Our next book club is gonna be Watchmen Club. We're gonna <gasps> read the Watchmen together. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. First, we read Dune together. Now we're reading The Watchmen. So, I'm really excited about That's this. a highly regarded comic book series. It is a highly regarded comic book series. And actually, uh, Time Magazine is on the top 100 novels of all time that you should read, novels. And okay. this is your next book club? Yes, this is my next book club, and we will be reading this starting in February. But in the meantime, if you want to get a copy of the book, if you don't already have one, 
I'm gonna be offering an awesome Watchmen box. I'm doing a pre-sale, just like we did with the Dune box. We're gonna have a Watchmen box. Oh so. my gosh, that's so exciting. Oh, there's gonna be stickers, bookmarks, like, ugh, this robot comedian patch, you're gonna fucking lose your mind. It's like hilarious, it's so awesome. Oh wow, you made all of your own promotional merch for Watchmen Club. I did, I did. Uh, I did it with the help of Matthew Skiff. He's been designing everything and it looks so good. I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to get this merch, okay? Like, I wanna wear this stuff. Like, I'm so stoked on it, so. Um, so yeah, so that'll be launching in October. Be on the lookout for our Watchmen Club box pre-sale. And just so you know, you're gonna be getting this copy of Watchmen. This is a newer, a newer version of the trade paperback. It's got a lot of cool supplemental stuff in the back. A lot of really neat stuff from old Dave Gibbons. Check out some of his huh? drawings. Will you personally sign my copy? Um, there will be an option to get a signed one, but most of them are just gonna be stamped because it's like, but we have a Watchmen Club stamp that's like official. So it'll be like your Watchmen Club official. Thing. It'll be stamped on the inside right here. But I haven't gotten them made yet, but they're like ready to go. We know what it's gonna look like. Oh, neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, no big deal. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Check it out. Well, who knows if he approves or not. I think if he would be cool towards anyone using his art, it would be me because I'm just getting people to read it and then talk about it together because that's all he wants, okay? Like that's all Alan Moore wants. He doesn't want you to watch the movie, okay? He does not want you to watch the movie. He wants you to read the comic book, read what he wrote. And uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty amazing. And I think that it's also really socially relevant right now. There's a lot of really cool themes going on in this book that I really can't wait to delve into with you guys. It's gonna be, it's gonna get pretty deep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is a very dense comic book. Oh yeah. Oh, it's dense, baby. It's dense. You know, it's funny. I went from Dune, which is like one of like the densest like sci-fi novels to like the densest graphic novel I could find. Do you think that Watchmen is the supreme masterpiece of graphic novels? Well, I don't know if you can really quantify who's number one, but I can tell you that I feel like this comic book definitely raised the bar in comic books. I mean, there's pre-Watchmen comics and then there's post-Watchmen comics. And what Alan Moore did in this just really um, changed the whole game. And it's really amazing. It really raised the bar in the comic book industry for the level of writing that was going on. Well, if you're interested in learning more about Todd McFarlane, I would highly recommend uh, this interview he did recently with Complex. It was really great. Uh, I, ugh, so great. Matthew Skiff told me about this interview and I was like, immediately watched it. Yeah, he talked a lot about, you know, going from Marvel to starting Image, uh, also his toy company. I mean, that's the thing that's crazy about him, okay? He started off at Marvel as an artist, like made them a shit ton of money with his art style and then got mad. Was like, Ugh, when Marvel like wasn't being cool and like hooking it up back for him, you know, he felt like he was being taken advantage of, which he was. And so he was like, fuck this, guys, we need to quit this and make our own thing. 